So all of you out there who are parallel parenting with a narcissistic person as the other parent, this one's for you. I'm Lise Colucci, and I am a life coach here to help you with all things related to healing from toxic relationships and dealing with and understanding narcissistic people. So when you are parallel parenting, in particular today, I wanna to talk about when the narcissistic person inserts themselves in your family life, in your home life. Let's distinguish between parallel parenting and co-parenting. First of all, with co-parenting in a healthy situation, you have what is to be assumed two semi-healthy people, two not toxic people, let's put it that way, sharing and communicating and all of that together for the well-being of the child or children. Okay, that is you're parenting together in separate homes. You have communication, you have understanding, you have you have your set rules, they have their set rules, but you don't undermine and try to affect the other home when you're co-parenting with, you know, with undermining rules or or talking bad about the other parent and all of that. Okay, you don't do that in a healthy co-parenting. The reason you have to parallel parent when you are with a toxic person is because that doesn't work because you're trying your best as the, the not toxic parent, right? To do what's best for your children, to do what's best for your household and to deal with your toxic ex at the same time. They are not only toxic to you, they're toxic to the children. They're toxic to the relationship you have with your children and they're toxic to the relationship you have with them around the children. Okay, so there's it's a no win situation to try and co parent that they are going to walk all over you. They are going to alienate you. They are going to triangulate the children in and create problems. They're going to try and manage your household from afar through the children. Right. It's it's ugly. Parallel parenting is to help you not have to navigate all that, not have to deal with all of that, and to keep the household separate for the well-being of the children, for the best interest of those children in your lives, and for yourself, okay? It's not a selfish thing when I say that, because a healthy parent, a happy parent, creates a healthy and happy home, all right? And so it is, it's really about being able to live your life separate from the narcissistic person, raise your children separate from the narcissist, narcissistic person, understanding that, they, that those children also go into the other home. It's live and let live mentality. You do over there, I do over here, okay? You do your house, I do mine. And unless there is something really, uh, you know, that needs to be addressed, you stay out of each other's way. That is parallel parenting. Parallel parenting is sharing the bare minimum of information, only what's needed to be shared. You don't text them cute pictures of your trip. You don't tell them what you had for dinner. You, they don't even need to know your routine or your rules for your home because guess what? They would just undermine them anyway, right? So parallel parenting is really about you doing you in your home with your children and they do their own thing over there. You don't get involved in their business. They don't get involved in yours. Okay. It's not an easy route because we know narcissistic people can't just let it go. They can't just do that. And also it's very difficult from the survivor side of things, because here you are trying to create some normalcy and some healthy routine and some lack of toxic in your household and your children are going back into a toxic household on the other end. And, and you know that's true because they're dealing with a toxic parent. And we know from all of the videos we see here and from at least where I sit from talking to people who were raised by toxic people that that's never a pleasant experience or there's a lot of confusion around it or there's a lot of programming that gets in our, our children and or our heads if we were raised by it, right? So. Parallel parenting can also help you have a delineating line so that your children have the opportunity to have a healthy, happy household with you. Okay, understanding that, yeah, they're going into the toxic household. It's awful, it's painful, but it's the reality. Okay, and having a healthy, happy household with you gives them the balance, it gives them the sense of self, it allows them to be individuals. 
okay, even though they can't be with that other parent. Um, and we can't control things, right? So parallel parenting really is an option that helps, once you get good at it, helps make the separation. If you are angry at your toxic ex all the time in front of the children, even if you're trying not to let it show, that's not healthy for anyone in the situation, right? So the parallel parenting can help make that line. But what happens when that, that other toxic parent is constantly inserting themselves into your household? What do we, what do you do? Let's take that one piece, okay? When the toxic person ruins holidays, ruins birthdays, has to send over bits of themselves, right? Like photographs or whatever it is um, with the child. When they are, when they are trying to get to you through your kids, when they are telling their children lies about things you said so that your children believe, you know, untruths about what you said. How do you handle that? That is a really tricky one. And this is one of the things that they do. They will triangulate the children in and then blame you if you say anything saying, don't triangulate the children in. They will show up at things that they're not invited to. They will insert themselves if they are that type of narcissist where they need to be the controlling. You might see this more with mothers who are narcissists where they need to insert themselves in every action that the child does. And so they will push their way into things that are not their business. They will try and get involved with what's going on in your household. And they will, I've seen this also with toxic fathers where they will insist on knowing everything that's going on in the child's day as if when they have the child, they even know what's going on in the child's day, right? But they need to know the routine, what they ate, what they, who their, who their friends are, whether, and they're, I'm talking little kids, you know, that, that, that's not, it's not relevant to raising the child in a healthy way in their home. It doesn't give them any information that they need, but they're still inserting themselves. And so this is where learning to gray rock and learning to set boundaries and hold the line is really important. Anyway, so what do you guys do when you're dealing with this stuff? How do you make some sanity for yourself? How do you create healthy homes when the, with this going on? It is frustrating. It is, it's, it's, you know, it takes the job of parenting and the role of a parent and makes you have to also be, you know, the keeper of the narcissist and and the psychologist for the family and all of this because of all the chaos that's being brought on by the toxic person okay if you can you're never going to make that toxic parent happy you're never going to be able to win them over or it's not a game of control okay it's a game of this is my line it's not even a game it's a reality this is my line and you won't cross it okay and when they do because they will you push back on the line and you say i'm sorry no and, and that's it. And you let them be upset. You let them be angry. Unless you've got violence or, or some severe alienation going on, then you have to handle it a little differently. Maybe some yellow rock, maybe, maybe therapy for the children so that they can understand that they're living in two completely separate households and they can learn to navigate back and forth. It's really difficult. This is not an easy situation and these people do not make it easy for you or your children. It's unfortunate and, and heartbreaking, really they will throw at you their rights as a parent they will throw at you what's in the child's best interest they will even say things like the child wants xyz whatever it is as meaning that's not what actually happened the child wants to see me more and well but the parenting agreement says this and the child is little and we're going to stick with the parenting agreement and there's reasons behind why right but the child asks for it and so then they've groomed the child to ask for it how do you know it's grooming because it's the exact same words that the toxic person said right and, and it's very obvious that a four-year-old wouldn't be having these kind of conversations in the way that it's said, right? It's really obvious to you because you know the toxic person and you know the things they say and you know how they operate. Let me know what you think and what you're struggling with with this. And let's talk more about parallel parenting. It's something that really, we, we really need to do the in-action work here. We need to be able to talk and help each other figure out how 
to navigate this in the way that is best for your household, for your children, and for yourself. All right, you guys take care. If you need any coaching, group coaching, or anything like that, check out the information in every video and hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and we'll talk later. Bye-bye.